It is Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. Today, I want to talk about why teachers get fired. Now, I was, uh, you know, if you guys are not familiar with my background, I was a teacher for 17 years and administrator for 13. I um, spent some of my time in a, in a middle school, some of my time in a high school. I uh, taught at schools that, that range from all-white rural schools to suburban schools that had a majority of minority uh, students. I've worked uh, kind of the gamut through, uh, through my years. As a teacher, some of the things that I'm about to tell you I did not know. I would not have known this. I would not have known really hardly anything about it. As an administrator, I learned a lot about it. Now, um, how teachers get fired. First of all, if you're in a different state, I live in Georgia, um, it's going to be, you know, there's no need to get into like real detail with it because it's going to be different from state to state. The details, the uh, observation instruments that are used, things like that, whether or not your state is a union state or a non-union state makes a difference. Uh, but the bottom line is it's kind of similar, okay, from, from state to state. If uh, you are a teacher and you commit some type of crime, uh, if you do something involving money, if you do something involving sex, um, especially those two things, those will get you fired uh, pretty much. You can get fired you know, pretty quickly, um, almost immediately. So those two things um, are not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about things that get you immediately fired. Teachers can be fired if they commit something like that. So those two things set aside or those types of things set those aside I'm talking about being able the, the capacity to be able to do your job being fired because you're not a good teacher about what does it take for somebody to get fired for that now I'm going to t just tell you guys this is my opinion okay uh, the next part of this video I'm going to tell you what um, you know how I kind of view teaching in general and the types of teachers that are out there and this is again through 30 years of experience uh administrative and teaching experience uh and this may upset some people i don't know but i'm retired now so it doesn't matter there are some people that are just i call them gifted teachers they can they can just do it you know whether it's because of their personality whether it's because of the relationships that they form with their students i i don't know exactly what it is they you know they never have any problems with behavior hardly any compared to other people they don't have problems with students learning i mean the kids learn the kids behave the kids pay attention they can just do it now a lot of people think they are that kind of teacher <laughs> but they're not there's not many of those in my experience what i have seen uh, is in a given school, depending on how big the school is, generally you would have one to maybe four teachers in the whole school that are, that are like that, that are just purely gifted teachers. And in general, uh, the things that we ask them to do pretty much just get in the way of them teaching. They, they can just, you know, they don't need all that. They don't need all the observations. They don't need all the, you know, their kids are learning. If you think back when you were, you know, over your educational career, how many teachers do you remember that were just like, man, they were just awesome. Everybody was learning. Everybody was, it was just the greatest classroom experience I've ever, that, how many were there? There weren't many. It, in my, as I went through elementary school, middle school, and high school, I can only think of maybe one over the 12 years. And I, and I never had a single one like that when I was in college um, and when I was a teacher I didn't realize how good some of these other teachers were uh, I was not that kind of a teacher I had to work at it the second category of teachers are teachers that are they're quality teachers uh, they're serviceable teachers you know for lack of a better way to put it uh, they can do the job okay some are better than others but generally the kids in their class can learn, they can manage their class, uh, they don't take a whole lot of, uh, you know, they're not high maintenance, uh, they just, they do their job day in and day out, 
You don't have to worry about your son or daughter being in your class. They're going to get the job done. Second category, we'll say is about 80%. Um, so about 80% of the teachers in your building, they're good teachers. And that, like again, that was my experience. You may be at a place where it's higher. Uh, you may be in a place where it's lower. Now, if you're a math teacher, you've already calculated and you said, wait, that leaves like 20%. What about the other 20%? Well, the other 20%, uh, some of them are, or they just need more help. The other 20% need more support they need more attention um, you know they're they may not it may be because they're inexperienced it may be because uh, you know they may be um, they may not work hard you know it may be their attitude you know, they went in a good teacher education program maybe you know it's just a bad year for them there, there's you know family problems there's things going on in their life for whatever reason you got about 20 percent that are kind of on the you know kids may not be learning in their class as much as they should be. Uh, the behavior in the class, the classroom management may not be where it needs to be. So some of those can be helped and they can get better and they can get into that, that uh, level that, that is a good, uh, you know, that where the teachers are, are good teachers, they can, they can attain that. And it may take them five or six years, it may take them 10 years, but they can get there. There is a certain percentage and I cannot tell you exactly what it is but in my experience, um, it's generally four or five in a building. Um, again, depends on how big the school is, things like that. But you have four or five that they, and, and, and this is where it may offend some people, but they cannot do it. Uh, there's no amount of learning. There's no amount of help. There's no amount, of it. they just can't, they can't do it. They cannot teach. Either it's their personality, it's their, whatever. It's for whatever reason, it's just, it doesn't work for them. And it's just like that in any profession. There, there's some professions, certain people, they just can't do it. They just can't do it. So, those people, the majority of the time, uh, the job is so miserable to them because they are so unsuccessful that they generally will quit. But then you have another group of them that they are not going to quit no matter what. Either they just don't see that they're not being successful or they're just determined. They think they're going to get better, things like that. Um, but for whatever reason, they don't want to quit. So how do those people get taken care of? And the reason that's a big deal is this. Uh, think about it as a parent because when I was, you know, an administrator and a teacher, I had kids in the school system. And it was a big deal to me that if there was a teacher out there uh, that would that could not do their job and that's a group of students and that's a lot of students I mean they may have five classes of 30 kids. I mean that's hundred and fifty kids that They're in a classroom where they're not going to learn and If it's a classroom that's if it's a third grade classroom You've got a bunch of third graders which is that's the most critical year of education uh, you know statistics show that if you do poorly in third grade Chances of you dropping out of school or not graduate are huge, much higher. It's a critical year. If you got a third grade teacher that's not a good teacher, that's that's a big deal. I've you know I, I've walked into classrooms, other administrators, district level administrators, state level people come in and they watch a person teach and they walk out of there and they're like that person needs to be gone. And, you know, you would think, well, if you see that and the principal sees that and the district people see that and the state people see that and everybody sees that and everybody's in agreement, shouldn't that person just be gone? And the answer is they will not be just gone. Uh, to get rid of them, to fire them, is a, a very complicated process. But in Georgia, the way it used to be is you had tenure. You had a tenure system. And that was there to be able to get rid of people like that. In their first three years, the way it used to be, is you could let a teacher go without any, uh, you didn't have to give them a reason. You just let them go during the first three years. You could not renew their contract. And the, what was so crazy about that system was that you would not give them a reason why, you would just do it. Because if you gave them a reason why, then they could get an advocate or a lawyer or something that could say, well, you never gave them an opportunity to improve on that specific thing that you told them. Why didn't you just help them? You just didn't tell them anything. You just let them go at the, you know, at the end of the year. 
Now, what Georgia has and what all, all the states have is they have some type of uh, teacher observation instrument and it measures everything from how professional they are with each other, how professional they are with the parents, uh, you know, what their duties, how they do their duties, you know, being on time, all that kind of stuff, um, their classroom management, how their kids score on standardized tests. Uh, there's all these domains, all these different things that they measure during these observation instruments. And the idea is that if a teacher's not doing a good job, they're not getting good scores, uh, then they, you know, maybe the profession is not for them. They're not being successful. So we need to use that instrument as a way to target things that they need help with and help them. Or if they have had help and they, they're not getting better or they're really, really, really failing, then it, you use that instrument as a way to get rid of them. Well, just that is not a way to fire teachers. Like they can't just have horrible scores on their observations for two or three years in a row and say, okay, that's it, you're gone. The way it works is you go through a process where you try to help them improve. You find what the area is that they're struggling in and then you give them assistance to help them get better. Now, I have seen people where they're not, there's everything is wrong. Any, all, they can't do any of it. You know, they can't make lesson plans. They can't, you know, stuff like that. And with them, you can't say, well, you got eight things that you need to be working on and I'm going to help you. you. You can't help them with all those eight. There's too much stuff and you you're busy as an administrator i mean there were years when i was a high school administrator i would have 2,000 referrals a year 2,000 discipline referrals in a year and there's only 180 days you could you can you know divide and figure out how many that is a day and it was everything from uh i mean it was everything from physical assaults you know down to tardies uh you know theft rape i mean all kind of things so I didn't have time to sit here and, you know, do every single thing for every teacher. I had to focus on particular people. And what would happen is at the beginning of the year, as, a, as an administration, we would sit down before the year started, because this is how much time it took. We would have to say, okay, who are the possible people that are, are bad enough that we need to consider firing them? And we would come up with a list. And then we would assign them to administrators because we all had, you know, teachers that we observed. And then you knew going into that year that, that you were going to do ex extra documentation on that person. And the way it worked is you would have to have a, a development plan, a professional development plan set up for that teacher. And it would include things like, let's say the teacher had a hard time in classroom management. Well, you know, to help them, it would be like, okay, well, I'm going to sit down with them for 20 minutes. Uh, you know, twice a week, and I'm going to go over some strategies with them. I'm going to have them watch, you know, some videos that are about classroom management. I'm going to have them go into some other teachers' classrooms that are really good with their classroom management and observe them and record, you know, what they saw. Uh, I'm going to have them, you know, have a mentor teacher that they work with. You could do all kinds of things that are supposed to help them. Then that teacher has to do all those things, and they have to document all the stuff that they do. And then you have to go in and do observations and give them some kind of score specifically on that one thing to see if they are improving. And that can't just be one or two observations. I mean, that may be 20, 30 observations. It may include you. Uh, you're going to bring in other administrators because you don't want them to say, well, that guy just didn't like me and he just gave me bad scores. You'd bring in people from other schools, other administrators from other schools. You'd bring in people from the district. Uh, you'd get other teachers to observe. You'd do all these things to make sure it wasn't just one person's bias. And then we would have to have meetings after every observation. All this stuff would have to be documented. It would be 20, 30 pages of, of documents, um, you know, over the course of that plan. And then at the end of the plan, you would determine whether they had met, you know, whether they had improved or not. Now, here's the problem with that. They're already a struggling teacher. They already have a hard time with their class. They already have a hard time getting their work done. They already have a, and now you're putting more work on them. So, it, but now I have seen situations where you did that and the teacher improved. You know, like I said, a lot of teachers just maybe need some extra help. Uh, then you would, you know, you'd notify the um, personnel people at the district level. And you'd say, listen, we got a teacher here. You know, they're, they're not performing. You know, we have them on a professional development plan. You know, and they'd ask how they had done. We would tell them, and they'd say, okay, well, 
they'd kind of give you some direction. We'll do more things, and then we'll sit down and talk with them, and then we'll give them a certain amount of time, and then we'll. So now you're getting into the next year. So here's the bad thing: if you're a parent and you got a teacher like that, that your son or daughter's in their class, they're going to be there the whole year. They're not going anywhere. No matter how bad they, you know, that there's nothing unless they just do something, you know, really wacky. They're not going to get fired that year. They're going to be there. So now you've 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 taken that whole year. You've done all this documentation. You've done all these observations. You've done all this extra work. Then you got to turn around, do it again the next year, and sometimes you have to do it again a third year. It just depends on who your principal is, how committed they are to it, you know, that kind of stuff. Eventually, you know, they can be fired. Now they can have representatives. Uh, a lot of people, there's professional uh, organizations in Georgia and they have advocates and stuff. But it's been my experience that the people that are advocates don't want to see people in the classroom that are not good teachers either. So they help them, just like we try to help them do a better job. But they realize, you know, when they go in there, if you're doing a poor job and you did not carry out your plan and you did not do the things that they required you to do, then they're not going to be able to help you very much and I would ne I would never take a teacher to the district level unless I knew I had an open and shut unless I knew I was going to win I never did anything unless I knew I was going to win whether it was a student uh, tribunal where we were going to you know put a student out of, out of school for long term I never went before a tribunal unless I had an open and shut case same thing with teachers I never went unless it was an open and shut case. The administrators, they can be fired. Um, they can just be fired. They don't go through all the stuff like they do with teachers. An administrator can just be let go. Um, so if you're thinking of becoming an administrator, you need to realize that in most states. Uh, and you can get a hearing and you can have observations and all that stuff, but bottom line is if you're in administration and you get to the point where they don't want you there, they're going to let you go and they don't have to. It's much easier than the teachers. So uh, there are, you know, obviously there's bad teachers, there's bad administrators, you know. I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you either way. But the, the only thing that's concerning about it, like I said, is from a parent point of view, you would want that to be expedited. Uh, but you cannot expedite it. You know, I was able, there were some cases where we did it in a year. But we started at the very beginning of the year. We, we got those people in touch with the district level people. I mean, we did everything in a year. But it took so much time and so much more effort away from the other teachers and other things I needed to do because you had to concentrate so much. But it was, I mean, if you think about it, it's, if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. So if you are a teacher and there's a situation where your administrator is talking about putting you on a professional development plan, you need to take that very seriously. And you need to find out up front, you know, is there some, I mean, you, you need to get on the ball because it's a big deal. If they went to the trouble of doing all that stuff, it's not just to give you a hard time. They're, they're you know, they're, they, it's a serious thing. So, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, that's how, in Georgia, how a teacher could get fired. And uh, like I said, it's a fairly involved process. They have rights to appeal and all those kind of things. And there's, you know, other things that are involved in it that are technical, you know, issues. But that's basically how it works. And that's why they can't just let them go. So anyway, you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.